G'day guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can log into your SQL database with C Sharp by console without doing the traditional way of going to the settings and sort of binding the database together with your program, um, if you look at it that way. So let's begin. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a console application and I'm going to create my string. So I'm just going to write here static string. The reason I'm putting static there and not public is because I want to be able to access the um, connection string within my static void main. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head over to my SQL Server Management Studio and I'm just going to find the database that I created before for this video and I'm going to go to Properties from that database and I'm just going to view the connection properties and once that loads up, so basically yeah, this connection properties is for this particular database only um, each database obviously has a different connection string so right now I'm just going to go to the server name which is my computer so for my connection string I'm just going to write server e equals and now I'm putting my computer's name with a semicolon remember semicolons basically mean please we don't say please well the computer's not going to do it for you and now I'm going to select the database that I want it to be able to access so in my case I'm just going to put database equals database 101 now look for the server and database how they're in capital letters you don't have to put them in capital letters but each time we write a query or something like a connection string that I like to put capitals just so I know that this is indeed um, you know it's part of the syntax if you will so what I'm going to do now is you could indeed do the integrated Windows security authorization thingamajiggy um, but because I want my program to access or be accessed from another computer um, that's not necessarily this computer I'm going to write user ID equals <clears throat> AS now that was the user that I set up with um, SQL if you'd like a, like a video tutorial on that how to set up a new user in SQL um, leave a comment below and I can sort that out for you and of course password equals password123 because why would it be anything else and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the static SQL connection or the con but I do need to add a reference, so that's why I've got on top there and, you know, using system.data.sql client. And of course, the semicolon, please. So now what I can do is now I can write SQL con or connection. And it obviously the syntax is like, yep, I see it there. And I'm just going to call it SQL con equals new SQL connection. Now, you don't necessarily have to put the connection string within the brackets, but I like to do it anyways, just sort of get out of the way and done with. So there's that done there. That should now allow us to connect to our server. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write here um, using SQL con. Now the reason why I'm writing using um, <clears throat> in a second when it comes up is because um, say when you've got a program and it's just on idle and it's not doing anything, you know, it's just kind of sitting there, but you'll notice that the RAM is just slowly and slowly and slowly, you know, being eaten away, kind of like Google Chrome, if you will. Um, it's quite RAM hungry, as we all know. So when we do a using, um, this basically stops what's called memory leaks. Um, well, it tries to anyway, so... By using using um, by using using here, yeah, uh, we can help make our program uh, less RAM hungry, and you know, with less RAM, then obviously the computer's gonna run a lot better. And um, yeah, because not everyone has you know, a hundred gig of RAM. Okay, so once we're done the using, I've got a try event there, as you can see. So I'm just gonna try and open the connection string, and I've got my SQL command. So I've just called it CMD. It was new SQL command. Now notice there, I put in the two little brackets, and I haven't written anything. That's because I'm just showing you, you could indeed just put command dot um, command text and you could put your query in there. However, I don't really like to do that. Um, some people like it, some people don't. It's, you know, whatever floats your boat, I guess. So now I'm just writing the query in there. So I've just done uh, a select count anything from, and I'm just getting my database's name. So that's it there. So user details table, and boy, that was fast. So select um, count anything from users details table. So what's this query is going to do is it's just going to basically return a number, um, which I'll show you later on in the track, and it's just going to let me know that if any name equals at uname, so the at uname is what's known as a parameter. Now these are really, really handy for stopping SQL injection. If you didn't have that, say a lot of people just have like password um, equals textbox1.txt, well, I could technically, like I'm showing you there, I could also write in that text box and also delete the database while you're at it sort of thing. So by having the at password and so forth, um, we're stopping SQL injections, which could te technically um, save your database if you were to release this to the public. And of course, at the end, I've just gotten my SQL con. So there's the query right there. Select count anything from user details table where name equals, you know, Andrew and password equals password123. So like I said, 
These unames, um, or sorry, parameters, they don't have to necessarily be at uname and at password. You could write Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck if you wanted to, um, but I've just put uname just for the, um, just so we know what we're dealing with, because you could have a lot of parameters, I don't know. So as long as you write in here, um, cmd.parameters.add with a value, and then with the first value, add the at uname, and then the second value is the actual value that you want to put there. Um, everything will link up so they have to match okay if they don't match the computer's not going to know what to put there okay so i'm telling it basically to replace the at you name with andrew in yeah some way or form so once again cnd parameters the add with value and what am i going to put that's right i'm going to put at pass and then i'm going to put the password in there which is just q w e r t y very famous password i think everyone said that password at least once or twice in their life so once we've done that, normally what we would do is we just, you know, we did CMD and we'd execute the query and um, <clears throat> Bob's your uncle sort of thing as long as everything was working a okay. But in this case, because we have got these select counts, from, you know, anything from user tables where name equals blah, 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 and password equals blah, 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 it's going to count how many times that a name and a password match. So if they're in the same row with each other, okay? So this isn't going to count if Andrew has the same, you know, if I have the username Andrew, and I put Harry's password. Well, that's not going to match, okay? Because it has the and syntax there, so it it would have it would return zero. But as you can see here, I've got integer results equals, and I'm casting this to an integer, which is basically like convert. Um, and if you're using this, following this tutorial for VB.net, you don't have to worry about it. VB.net's a very forgiving language, which is part of the reasons why I really really like that sound language still to this day. Um, so we, we're casting into an integer, and we're putting CMD execute Scalia, which basically. Um, <clears throat> what it does is, is it's just simply, it's kind of like a bull, I guess, but it's just getting the, like what it needs. Um, if it finds the name and the password and they're both in the same row, well then it's going to return one or two, or it's just going to count how many times it sees it there, because it could be a user that has, you know, if you're just having a bit of fun, you could have the same username and the same password for um, two different people, and then it would return two, I guess, but um, in this case, we're just going to have it as one. So if result is more than zero, console.writeline, successful login, else, console.writeline, wait for it, there it is, console.writeline, and we're just going to have incorrect login or something like that. Um, so yeah, obviously then you could just do a loop back to the start and try again. And because I've got this in my try, I'm just going to have a catch, expectation, um, and console.writeline, I'm just going to put the ax.message in there, so whatever the Visual Studio would throw at me, it's going to throw at me in the console. And finally, so after that finally, once we've done all of that, and if we failed or whatnot, either way, finally is always going to happen, we're just going to do console.read key. So we just want to see exactly what's happened, if we've successfully logged in, if we've entered the wrong password, or if the program has crashed. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close the connection. I'm going to do that underneath the result. Um, we don't need the connection to be open anymore. And if get, it's in a good habit to do the connection not close. So because that username and that password was correct, it's given me the successful login, as you can see. Um, then we're just going to go back to my database here. I'm just going to check out what other um, uh, usernames and passwords I've entered. So if I right click on that and go to edit the top 200, you could do 1,000, but top 200 loads quicker. Um, we've got Andrew, and we've got my password, we've got Harry, you know, James, and whatnot. So let's let's just delete one character from Andrew's password. And as you can see, we have incorrect login. So how cool is that? Okay, because it's obviously returning zero. So what I'm going to show you here quickly is I'm just going to do a console.write line, if I can spell. And I'm just going to put the result in there so we can see exactly what result is equaling. Equaling? Equaling? I don't know how to say that. So as you can see, that was zero. Okay, now if I put the correct password in there, we've got one, we've counted one person or one row and column, or two in that case, with the and uh, with the right username and password, and they're both matching. So let's take away the account, just to quickly show you if you do select anything from blah, blah, blah. You can see that it did do a successful login because it was able to find one match, but let's say it can't find a match, and it doesn't know it's counting. Well, as you can see, there's the reference, uh, object reference that's not sent to instance of an object, which basically means that, um, hey, this is null but we want, to, we want to count, so when we count and it is happens to be zero, well, zero and null are two different things. <clears throat> null is no value at all, and zero is a number because computers start from zero, as you guys are probably well aware. Um, so there you go, guys. There's a quick tutorial on how you can log into your SQL database um, with your C-sharp console without having to link the database through the settings. I hope this video has helped. If you did like it, do leave a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any problems, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.